Hey friends, it's Masood. Welcome back to Med School Moose. This is going to be US Emily Step 2 CK Buzzwords Part 2. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch Part 1 by now. If you have not, I will be sure to link it right here. And as always, be sure to subscribe to my channel to receive all of my latest videos and all of my high yield content to help you prepare for your board exams. Quick reminder before we get started, if you are planning on taking USMLE Step 2 CK, having a question bank for practice is a must. And TrueLearn is one of the best question banks on the market. This is one of the question banks that I used when I was preparing for my board exams. These TrueLearn smart banks have so many incredible features, including thousands of expertly curated questions deep analytics to help you understand your strengths and weaknesses, and detailed explanations to make sure that you're getting all the high yield information. I'll drop a link in the description below so that you guys can check it out, but be sure to take a look and use promo code MOOSE25 for $25 off a smart bank subscription of 90 days or more. Thank you, Trulon, for that awesome discount. Now let's jump into these buzzwords. First one, if you see violaceous papules or plaques, that's the way it's described, or you see a picture of that, you immediately should be thinking of lichen planus. Remember, lichen planus is the skin condition with the five Ps, so polygonal, pyritic, papules, plaques, etc. If you see a description like that, your mind should immediately be jumping to lichen planus. Next one, dapsone. If you see this on the exam, I want you to be thinking about G6PD deficiency. Dapsone is a medication that is not really used in medical application that much anymore. And there are a lot of medications like this on step 2ck on the board exams they're these obscure medications they're not really used clinically but they have weird issues weird side effects adverse effects that kind of thing and the reason that you need to know dapsone in particular is because it is associated with this g6 pd deficiency it can precipitate a hemolytic crisis similar to fava beans and buzzwords part one again be sure you watch that video so that you're getting all of those high yield buzzwords too but for this one dapsone i want you to be associating that with a g6 pd deficiency because it can cause a hemolytic crisis Next one, dark field microscopy. This has a few different applications, but the one that's prominent for the boards is for the identification of spirochetes. In particular, syphilis is probably the most prominent one. So if you see a question that's talking about the application of dark field microscopy or how spirochetes can be identified, you want to make that association there. A geometric rash, if you see something like this, your mind should immediately jump to contact dermatitis. The classic board's description is a patient that is wearing a bracelet or wearing a necklace or a pendant or something like that, and they have this rash that is in the shape of that piece of jewelry. If you see something like that, a geometric rash, contact dermatitis. Next one, muscle-specific kinase autoantibodies. This is associated with myasthenia gravis and can actually be used in aiding in the diagnosis of myasthenia gravis. These muscle-specific kinase autoantibodies. That's a mouthful. Next one, verapamil. The association here is with a cluster headache. Remember, verapamil, it's a cardiac medication. It can be used for other conditions like atrial fibrillation, but it's typically not first line. It's not as frequently used anymore, but it does have some other uses. And in this case, verapamil is first line prophylaxis for cluster headache. So be sure you know that association if you see verapamil on the exam. Moving on, tense bullae. This is going to be associated with bullous pemphigoid. This is another dermatologic condition. Remember, bullous pemphigoid has a negative Nikolsky sign, so these bullae, they're tense. They will not rupture if pressure is applied, and bullous pemphigoid is treated with topical corticosteroids. Next one, if you see violaceous or a description like that, we want to think lichen planus again. Remember, lichen planus is associated with the five Ps or the six Ps, depending on the resources that you're using to study, but they're purple, they're polygonal, they're planar, they're pyritic, they're papules, or they're plaques. And because this is the second time that we're talking about lichen planus, here is your visual stimulus. You can see them here. They're purple, they're going to be pyritic, somewhat polygonal, some of the shapes, and they're either papules or plaques. So be sure you know all of these high yield buzzwords and these images for lichen planus. Moving on now, if you see bone pain plus hearing loss, I want you to think about Paget disease for that one. Bone pain plus hearing loss. Nodular lesions on the tibia, I want you to make an association with Crohn disease. These nodular lesions can also be called erythema nodosum. It's also known as erythema nodosum. And these lesions can appear during a flare-up of Crohn disease. So make sure you know that association. Next one, a sheep herder. If you see a sheep herder on the exam, there's a specific organism that I want you to make an association with, and that's going to be a kinococcus granulosus. Remember, this is a tapeworm. Sheeps are an intermediate host for this organism. So if you see a sheep herder, that is the association that you should be making. Moving on, osmotic fragility test. This is a test that is used to diagnose hereditary spherocytosis. It can also be used in the diagnosis of thalassemia. 
periorbital headache plus tearing, so crying. If you see those two symptoms combined, then you want to be thinking about a cluster headache. And again, going back to one slide that we just saw earlier, one of the first line prophylactic medications for this is verapamil. Moving on now, if you see a patient with upper and lower motor neuron symptoms, you want to be thinking about amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, also known as a condition that Stephen Hawking had. This is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder. It's a really catastrophic disease, and patients will present with upper and lower motor neuron symptoms. Next one, if you have uterine bleeding less than 20 weeks plus an open cervical os, you want to be thinking about an inevitable abortion. These categorizations of abortions can be a little bit tricky, so you really want to make sure that you have this down in your mind. If there's uterine bleeding less than 20 weeks and there's an open cervical os, it is an inevitable abortion. There's no products of conception that have been expelled yet, but because that cervical os is open, this is something that unfortunately is inevitable. On the flip side of that, if you have uterine bleeding less than 20 weeks with a closed cervical os this is a threatened abortion so it hasn't happened yet that os is closed products of conception may not be expelled but there is a real threat that this could happen so be sure that you know those differences there Tabes dorsalis, hopefully this one is one that you guys remember from step one and from medical school. This is associated with tertiary syphilis. Remember Tabes dorsalis, there's damage to the dorsal columns of the spinal cord. Hypotension plus bradycardia. If you see this, you want to be worried about neurogenic shock. Physiologically, when patients have hypotension, they have low blood pressure. The typical response is to get tachycardia, to increase the heart rate, to promote systemic vascular circulation. But if you have hypotension plus bradycardia plus that slow heart Heart rate. That is very concerning for neurogenic shock. Next one here, quinidine. This is another example of a medication that's a little bit more obscure, a little bit out there, but it does have some associations. And in this case, it is with drug-induced lupus. Quinidine, it's an antiarrhythmic drug. It can be used to treat things like atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter. Not very commonly used for that again. So lower yield for that, but it does have a high yield association. In this case, that is going to be drug-induced lupus. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Click here on the left to watch USMLE Step 2 CK Buzzwords Part 1, and click here on the right to watch another video that YouTube thinks you'll love. Be sure to subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video.